Jedi. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to another video if you're familiar with us. If not, I'm Jonathan with Boston Collectors, and today's unboxing is all about Ahsoka Tano as seen in The Mandalorian. Beginning with the cigar wrap, we have our usual suspects. From a photo of the figure on the front, featuring the muted Season 2 colorway, as well as the product information. On the right side of the band, the product information continues. And for the left side, another photo featuring Ahsoka Tano holding Grogu. On the back, you can find the legal information, store locations, and more. Making our way to the front, the embossed Star Wars logo guide our eyes to the middle of the slipcover sleeve, featuring Ahsoka and Grogu. After removing the sleeve from the packaging, the Corvus-themed art box is revealed. The packaging features Ahsoka and Grogu communicating with one another and a tungsten hue overlaying the entire design. Unlike the embossed logo on the sleeve, the entire logo here is reflecting silver. The product information can be found around the entirety of the package design. On the back, we have the legal information similar to the outer sleeve. The final box slides out from its side and features a small excerpt. Ahsoka Tano, a Togruta female, was the Padawan learner to Anakin Skywalker and a hero of the Clone Wars. Alongside Anakin, she grew from headstrong student into a mature leader, but her destiny laid along a different path than the Jedi. And resting above the excerpt is yet another photo of both Ahsoka Tano and Grogu. After lifting the cover from the box, we're greeted to a premium experience to the DX release. Ahsoka and Grogu are neatly packaged in foam cutouts with small tidbits of information near them. And over Ahsoka, a warning to read the instructions before use. And with the box out of the way, we can dive into the review. If you're enjoying the content so far, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more. With that said, let's go ahead and continue. Out of the box, Ahsoka is pre-equipped with a pair of relaxed hands. These can also double as force gesturing hands if you're feeling adventurous. Next, we have one fist for the right hand. No idea why there's one, but that's all we get. Lastly, we have a pair of C-gripping hands. These can be used for both the lightsabers and the lantern included. Speaking of the lantern, there aren't any light-up effects, but the paint application and detail work speaks to Hot Toys' usual craftsmanship. The entire build of the lantern is plastic, but it does a great job conveying a brassy-like texture. I guess I had hoped for it to light up in the final product, and again, unfortunately it doesn't. As mentioned previously, the C-gripping hands are also used for the lightsabers included. The Shoto hilt, or the smaller hilt, is wielded in her left hand. It's also holstered on her left side, but more on that later. For her main hilt, it's noticeably longer in size, so you can't mistake her offhand hilt for this one. Both share similar designs in terms of the diamond patterns, gold accents, and the overall silver finish. It's the first time we've seen this design from Hot Toys, and they did a great job. However, I wish they would have considered surprising us with the USB sabers for this release. As beautiful as they are, I'm still trying to figure out where $315 went into this set. So I'm adding this in the list with the hands that we didn't receive. Getting back on topic, the hilts have smaller caps on the ends that are removable to install the saber effects. Simply pull them out and store them for safekeeping. The longer effect is for the main hilt, whereas the shorter effect is used for the shoto hilt. These have a very frosty tone to them, and I do like the overall appearance. 
I guess I just wish I could have seen them functioning lit up. It gets the idea across, though. For more of a dynamic appearance, we have the dynamic effects. These share the same frosty appearance as the ignited versions, but they have a slight clear gradient near the end. If you're one to pose these in your display, then you're all set. If not, and you're aiming for more of a neutral pose, you can holster them using the D-rings installed on her hilts. And don't forget the hilt tabs in case that bothers you. Next we have her poncho, but first we need to remove her portrait. After doing so, you can either unclasp the poncho to fit it on, or simply place it around her neck and not worry about unclasping it. After placing her portrait back on, you're all set to mimic the mysterious figure on Corvus. I doubt I'll be using it personally, but I do like the quality of the fabric. There's only wiring in the hood, but I'm not deducting points for it. When placing her hood over her Leku, it's far better than what we receive with the Clone Wars Ahsoka. With a bit of futzing, it could look amazing. Included with almost every Mandalorian figure, you have another Grogu. This is the first version, however, to have articulated arms and a pair of swap-out arms. Simply twist and pull the original hands out of the sockets, and you have a force gesture-like pair of arms replacing the originals. I'd say keeping the arms up is best for this particular Grogu, though. He looks kinda goofy when they're at his side. For comparisons, we have the Ahsoka Grogu in the middle, the Season 2 Grogu on the right, and the Season 3 Grogu off to the left. There are a handful of differences, and more noticeably, his collar. exclusive to the DX-21 is the diorama base. We've seen this previously though with the Empire Strikes Back Yoda. Everything's practically the same, down to the uncovered inserts used to levitate the rocks. Anyway, installing the tree is pretty simple. It's pretty much plug and play. Rather than giving us a bendable flight pole, we have a metal pole which twists into the base. I'm pretty sure it's due to the overall weight of the figure, which is heavier than you'd expect, so I don't fault them for it. Lastly, we have the waist clamp included to help hold her up in the display. To top it all off, you could add the lantern to the base if you wanted to have Ahsoka holding her sabers. Technically, this isn't canon, but I do find the poncho to fit very nicely over the Clone Wars Ahsoka Tano, far better than the one included with her own release. If you wanted to pair up another accessory with Ahsoka, you could have her handing the Beskar Spear to Mando as an option. And the final piece to it all isn't the cool base that I feel we should have received from the DX-20, but instead a cardboard backdrop. And now that we're done, find a pose and you're good to go. If you aren't blown away by the accessories, the rest of the figure is absolutely jaw-dropping. The portrait especially. I had a lot of fun just lighting the figure alone, but there are a few downsides that we'll discuss shortly. For now, let's discuss the Sir system. In order to reach the separate rolling eyes, you'll need to remove her Leku. With the tool included inside, you can change her pose as often as you want in your display. Either looking from the left, straight on, or from the right. There are certain angles where Rosario's likeness is lost, but not Ahsoka's. As for the 360 spin, I love that her neck appears almost seamless. Her Leku's also screen accurate, but I do wish there was an included canon accurate length as well. That last part is a bit of a stretch, but you'll see why in a moment. 
at this point, it's nitpicking what could have been better, but this is a very strong 9 out of 10, at least for me. As for comparisons, there's no denying this is Ahsoka Tano. The facial markings are a lot more refined as she mature, and her Leku isn't as vibrant blue compared to her younger self. As for Leku swapping, it isn't possible. Unless, of course, you're adamant and want to stand further back to make it work. Be my guest. <laughs> As for controlled lighting, here's where the magic happens. Phenomenal portrait design, but I do wish the lines were a little straighter in the final release. If the portrait didn't draw your eyes to the figure, the seamless body definitely had to. The muscular definition is phenomenal, and that alone had to take up quite a bit of research. Under the right lighting conditions, her clavicle bone, delts, and biceps have incredible definition. Not to mention nailing the appearance of an armpit and the side of her figure. My only issue is the film on her skin. For some reason, I have small elastic debris forming on her body during posing. I'll figure it out, but that's my only issue. The rest of the figure is near perfect in terms of her tailoring. However, posing is technically another issue. Oddly enough, she doesn't have a swivel at her thigh and her knees aren't double-jointed either. I'd imagine she may have fallen over quite a bit in testing due to being a heavier piece, but ratcheted joints, maybe? I don't know. You can technically get her in some decent poses if you're feeling adventurous, though. If not, stoic poses work, too. I'm understanding of the double jointed elbow, and if you own The Last Jedi Ray, you may have some idea about her armband unraveling as well. I'm not too upset with it, but I still would have liked the option myself. Speaking of the arm, you'll have to break it in a little before you start posing. First, let's remove her hand, gauntlet, armband, and finally her arm. The joint here is extremely firm, so I suggest fidgeting with it to break it in and loosen it up a bit, or else you risk breaking it off into the figure. This is the best way of going about it, at least in my opinion. Other than that, she's an awesome piece when she's all set up. To summarize my thoughts, this is a work of art, but it does have its downsides. The hand selection is limited. We don't have light-up arms, which would have been a lot easier to install on this figure, mind you. And we don't have the base stand included with the DX20. I'm not sure why that made sense, especially if the DX20 was given the lantern, when it wasn't included for that release. While the DX21 does fall flat in certain areas, when it comes to the presence of Ahsoka in your display, she's a powerhouse. If I could go back and change my decision, I would have chosen the DX20. You aren't missing out on the base unless you absolutely wanted it. Well, technically that Grogu and the forest backdrop. If I had to rate this figure, which was difficult, I'd break it up. For everything included, I'd give it a solid 6. However, for the tailoring, portrait, body design, and presence alone, she's a solid 9.5. If you enjoyed today's upload, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more content. As always, it doesn't matter what we rate the figure. If you like it, we love it. This is Jonathan with Boston Collectors, and we'll catch you next time.